Hey, so welcome back and this is another daily code problem. So today it's called missing element in a sorted array. So let's take a peek at this. So essentially what you're given is just an array called nums as well as an integer called k. And so what you wanna do here is basically you wanna find some missing number. Um, but what really is going on here is that this array uh, it has basically a bunch of numbers that is in ascending order. So it's sorted from smallest to largest. And you can see here, it doesn't have to necessarily start like at zero. It can start at four or five or six or any arbitrary number. Um, but what matters is that basically when you look from left to right, it's an increasing order. So the numbers increase when you look left to right. And so what you can also see is that there's kind of some space between each number at times where here, you don't see the numbers five and six. It basically goes from four and hops directly to seven. And then there's not an eight, but there's a nine. But between nine and 10, well, there's no kind of gap between them. You just go from nine directly to 10. Um, here's another example. It goes one, two, but then we skip three here. And then we go on to four. And so you don't necessarily want to grab like any of these missing numbers. You want to grab a particular number and that is described by this integer k. And so basically what this k uh, symbolizes is that you wanna find the first missing number. And so going from left to right here, when you're looking at this array, you would see that, okay, you go from four and then the next number is seven. And so there's some missing numbers between these two, which is five and then six. And we wanna grab the first missing number in this array and that would then be five because that's the first number that's missing in this array. Okay, and then for this one, now that we wanna grab the um, third missing number, when we look from left to right here, so in increasing order, we see, okay, it goes four and then it goes seven. And so basically there's two missing numbers between these two. And so then K, which is initially three, we would subtract two from it because essentially we've already kind of looked at two missing numbers so far. And so now we're just looking at for one more uh, missing number, which would be the next missing number. And so then we're looking at, okay, seven, and then it goes seven to nine. And well, there's a missing number between these two, which is eight. And so now we found another missing number. We're now at zero. And so we return this missing number eight. Okay, I hope I explained that pretty well. Um, if it doesn't make much sense, I think the code uh, will really help you better understand this. Um, but yeah, so, but before I go into the code actually, um, one thing that I did not realize, and I first implemented this, if we look at my submissions, um, just a little bit ago, I solved this question, but I did it in O of N time and constant space. And so the way I did it is I kind of just did exactly what I told you. I kind of went from left to right, and I just tried to hit those conditions of, okay, once it hits like a zero or that base case, then we just return that particular number. Um, but what you can do is actually provide a log n solution, and that's because we can actually use binary search uh, for this question. And so that will give us a, a much better time complexity, same space complexity because you're using uh, constant space, uh, but it's much more performant. And so it wasn't, initial, it wasn't um, very intuitive for me to use that. I just thought, hey, let's do kind of a greedy um, linear algorithm for this. But the way that you can do it using um, binary search, and I'll just kind of type that out, which gives you this kind of log n solution, is that, okay, we have these two pointers, left and right, which is typically what you do for binary search. And you can find out at every point um, how many missing numbers are between two numbers just by writing like a, a particular lambda function or just a function. And so one way you can do that is basically you can take, say you wanna find out, okay, how many missing numbers are between nine and four. And so basically what that's gonna be is nine uh, minus four, which is uh, five here. And so basically there's five missing numbers. And so the benefit of this is then we can kind of compare it to K and then that can kind of limit our bounds saying, okay, 
we need at least one missing number. And well, since there's five missing numbers between this range, let's limit our range between nine and four. And so let's no longer look at 10. And so now we're kind of looking at between four, seven, and nine. And so we say, okay, let's take the midpoint, which is seven. And so then we do seven minus four and see, okay, how many missing numbers are between these two points? And well, that's going to be um, three here. And so that will enable us to say, okay, well, there's also uh, enough missing numbers to now be looking between these bounds. And so essentially you get to the point, and we just did, where there's only two different numbers, four and seven. And so then you would just say, okay, let's take that uh, left number and just kind of add that uh, K, which is one here. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I think the only thing that I'm missing here is that in some cases you want to be taking into the account the particular location that you're in. Because basically when you're saying, okay, really, it's not exactly like, okay, um, take four and nine here, four minus, so nine minus four. So yeah, there is a difference of five between these two numbers, but what really matters is that you also take into account the index, like nine here. And so that then you just subtract uh, two from here, because really what this is saying is that you're saying that there should be at least five numbers, but here you're saying that there's only two, uh, or really, I guess, three numbers that should be here. So really the number of missing numbers between these two points is three missing numbers, not exactly five missing numbers, right? Because there should only be uh, at most three here. Okay, I hope that made a little bit of sense. So let's go ahead and implement it. I think this will um, really help solidify things. So the first thing that you typically want to do for binary search is that the left pointer will be zero, the right pointer will be the length of the numbers minus one. And so essentially we're going to be returning some particular missing number at the end of this. Okay, and so from here, um, what we definitely want to implement is that um, function for determining what is the number of missing numbers at a particular index. So number, or I guess return the uh, number of missing numbers at index i. And so to do that, we can just write like a lambda function or we can just write a normal function. And so that would be okay. Let's call it um, like missing uh, lambda. And so that's going to be essentially, we'll pass in a particular index. And so then we're going to return um, the number of missing numbers from that point on. So the number at i, and then we basically just subtract the first number to get the kind of the difference between nine minus four, which we did in our previous example. Um, but then also we want to take into account the index that you're at. So that's like the true missing, the number of missing numbers, not just the difference between the starting and current number. All right, and so from here, there is one edge case that we have to think about. And so what this is, is that at certain points, we can see um, at this case, the actual missing numbers isn't between these numbers. It's actually past four. And so we return six here because one, two, there's one missing number three, right? So we only need to find two more missing numbers and that's past four. So then we would say, okay, five, and then we have one more missing number and then after five would be six and then this would be zero. And so we would return six. So we wanna account for this edge case. So edge case where um, the missing number is past the last number. And so to do this, what we want to think about is, okay, um, we want to look at the missing num the number of missing numbers at our last index here. And so if our K that we have here is greater than the number of the total number of missing numbers in this entire array, then naturally it's going to be beyond that point. And so what that'll look like is then, okay, let's go ahead and return uh, basically the number, the last particular number 
um, plus or I guess minus the number of missing numbers in our array. So missing at this particular last index and then plus K, which is okay, how many or what missing number are we looking for? All right, and so from this point on, we can actually finally do binary search here. So let's go ahead and implement a binary search. So typically what the pattern kind of looks like um, is this. So while we meet this condition, uh, let's go ahead and find the current midpoint, uh, which you can do it a couple different ways, but I like to do it this way. And so from here, we just want to be looking at uh, two different conditions. All right, and so basically um, what we're thinking about is that, okay, um, if our, um, we want to make sure that we're shrinking that range based on the number of missing numbers. So we want to get the current kind of number of missing numbers at this particular uh, midpoint. And so basically we just care about comparing X um, to K. And so from this point on, we want to be comparing X to K. And so we're saying, okay, if there is a greater number of missing numbers um, at this current midpoint, then let's shrink it. So if X is greater than or equal to K, that just means, okay, we have enough missing numbers at index M to satisfy um, K, so let's shrink our range. So in that case, R will then be equal to the midpoint. Otherwise, we want to do the opposite. So um, basically else, it's the inverse of this. So it would be like K is greater than X. And so in that case, we want to um, not shrink, but really just kind of uh, cut the left-hand side because we need a greater number of missing numbers uh, moving forward. So otherwise, then our left pointer will then be equal to the midpoint. All right, and so once we do this and we finally exit our binary search, that then means we finally found kind of where we, what is the missing number. And so what that's going to be is basically the number on the left-hand side plus K, because that is essentially the uh, what missing number you're looking for. But then we also want to be subtracting the number of missing numbers up to L. And so what that looks like is that once again, if I show you this example, maybe, um, I like this one. And so once we find that, okay, we finally got our left and right pointers, the left pointer is at four, the right pointer is at seven. Then we say, okay, how many missing numbers are up to four? Well, there's no missing numbers. So missing will then return like zero. And so then the number here at, on the left pointer will be four and plus K, well, K is one. And so that in that case would return five. If we look at uh, this example here, we would get to a point where, um, let's see, we're at seven. And so this would return, and I'll just kind of erase all these. Um, we would be at index seven. So left is here and then the right pointer is here. And then how many missing numbers are up to uh, this number seven? Well, that's basically seven uh, minus four uh, minus one because this is index one. So that would be returned by this lambda function. And so then that would basically do uh, minus two here and then plus K, which is three. So plus three, and then that would return eight. All right, so let's try submitting this and success. So that is the uh, Leaco problem for today. So it's log n time complexity and constant space or O1 space complexity. I hope that helped a lot and uh, good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.